Kevin. What are you looking at? Hey, um, attached piece. <laughs> um, the question I get every now and again, you know, from the new guys, guys just starting out, you know, just, just playing with it, just learning how to weld a little bit. How do you fill in a gap? Well, the first thing I tell them is, don't have one. <laughs> you know, make sure your fit is right. You know, nice straight lines, nice smooth cuts, you know, nice tight join in there. You know, with the, I mean, that's the best way. You know, do your fit up, get all your, your prep done first, where everything is going to go together smooth and neat and straight. Why However, does it matter if you can fill it in? Now that's a good question. Structurally, you know, that, that's the biggest thing. You know, um, you know, for a little art piece, for, you know, some little dust catcher to sit out in the yard, okay, it's probably not quite that important. But when you're building buildings, you know, you're building bridges, things like that, it's got to be a good joint. You know, they're going to come in and x-ray it. They're going to make sure, you know, everything is sound inside. There's no porosity. There's no gaps. You know, that's, that's just part of being a good welder is be able to get that fit correctly and get it all put together the way it's supposed to. Is there ever any an issue with air coming up between the gap and, and affecting the weld? That's porosity right there. You know, when you're welding and you've got that puddle of molten metal, you're superheating the air, you know, above and below it, you know, all right around it. If you've got a gap and you've got that puddle of molten metal right there, now it's going to start to pull air up. You know, as that hot air rises, so you're literally pulling air from under the weld up into and right at the edge of the weld as you're sitting there trying to weld along, you're just giving yourself more problems by not having a good tight, close joint right there. But that being said, yeah, come here, let me show you. <laughs> so what I've got here is just some quarter inch plate came out of the scrap bucket out back. What I'm gonna do is just set it up with a a nice V gap in it. So we start out, you know, fairly close on one end, getting bigger towards the other end. And I'll show you a couple little tricks on how to fill things in. You know, you're, you're just trying to fill in a boo-boo. You know, you're not making something structural, like I said earlier. So I just got this nice big gap on one end. So I thought, well, let's set it about, ooh, half a finger here. That's a technical measurement, right? That, that's a technical, yeah, it's a calibrated half a finger, sure. So I'm going to be using the, the uh, Longevity uh, Pro MTS 200 over there. So you know, I, I just, I love the MIG welder in this machine. I, I think it's just a fabulous, fabulous little MIG welder. It, it'll be fun to play with that and see how it does with this. So let me just cut a couple quick little tacks on it. Watch your eyes. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm just going to turn the machine down a little bit. You know, it's set at 23 volts, and the, the uh, wire feed is set at 147. But remember, on this machine, that does not mean 147 inches a minute. I'm not exactly sure how they figure out their wire speed, but that's about, that's about two thirds of the way up on what this machine is capable of. Um, but I want to turn that voltage down from 23, I'm gonna turn it down to about 21 and a half. And I'm gonna go ahead and run a little bead right there. Before you get started, Kev, can't you just run it one end to the other? Well, yeah, you... Yeah. I wouldn't, okay, because of the gap. Um, what I've found, and yes, I'm filled by Sheriff Caps. Uh, what I've found is now if you start where I ended this last bead and just try to run it all the way to the end, you're going to get one piece of metal or the other is going to try to move away a little bit. So the gap is actually going to get wider as you're trying to catch up to the end of that gap over there. It's always better to tack it on one end, tack it on the other, you know, and then I like to hopscotch back and forth. You know, get it on both ends, and then I'll try to tack it in the middle. And then I'll get, you know, a little bit, one inch, you know, one inch, say, in between these two tacks and those two tacks. And then I'll push it out to, let's say, two inches in between those. You know, and just try to fill it in that way. Uh, you know, and just keep working my way out, working my way out, you know, filling in, hopscotching back and forth. That helps keep the heat spread out more evenly. Uh, I find it, it keeps the, the warpage down a little bit on the thinner metals. 
you know, you're not building up all that heat all in one spot and then just having a big blow. Oh, great question. Well, let me just get another little run right there. And I'm going to start on this end and go back the other way with it. So let me start on the end here. Actually worked okay. Turn it down just a little bit more. You know, leave that same wire feed on it. Ran a nice little bead, filled it in nice. So what I wound up doing, I, I got a little bit of a gap in there. You know, it was starting to open up just a little, and I could just weave back and forth a little. You know, steal a little from each side, help fill it in. Worked really nice. So this is the first one I did at uh, 21 and a half, and then this is the one that I just did at 20. Uh, 21.2. Well, let's see on the back side. So there you can see the 21.2 coming all the way through, and the 21 and a half coming all the way through. So a couple of other little, you know, backyard things that I've done. Uh, I've actually gone so far as to take like a coat hanger and straighten it out and lay it down inside the gap just to, to help bridge it a little bit. Um, you can... Uh, you can even get like a piece of copper, you know, if you're welding steel, get a piece of copper, you know, you know something, you know, eighth inch, quarter inch would, would, would be preferred, but you could use that copper as a backer to go on the back side of your gap because the steel won't stick to the copper. You can clamp it in there, you know, prop it in, however you have to do it. Just get that piece of copper behind there, and then that'll give you something to hold your, your molten puddle up with as you're coming in trying to fill that big gap inside there. You know, lots of different ways to cheat at it. You know, you could even take another piece of steel if you had to, and just put it on the back and weld it in. You know, that as long as it's not going to get in your way for whatever it is that you're trying to do. So, hope that answers your questions. Uh, I'm going to go back to what I'm doing. See you.